This is not a train, McCormick. It's the Casper Arrow. Something's going on on this train. Someone popped this guy with a poison eclair? Oh! What's going on? Where's Elizabeth? He's the murderer. Tell me again what she likes to do to guys with curly hair. I vote for jumping. Now, let's not pull the cord too early. Sure beats flying, huh? Black hair, blue eyes, and how tall? Well, is this for real, or is this going to be another friend from the Tiger Tail Club? Really? Okay, good. All right, here's the deal. Hardcastle's got to be on the train by noon. So give me an hour to get back here. Give me an hour to think about it. I mean, make sure this place is actually mine. Let it sink in. No, ma make it six. Yeah. And Benny, her name's really Tawny. Tell me again what she likes to do to guys with curly hair. McCormack! Really? Uh, look, someone, someone just... Turn on the cold water. Yeah, that's great. All right, great. I'll see you at six. Benny, Benny, do her laugh for me one more time. I love it. I love it. All right, good, good. All right. What's her name? What's whose name? The girl you're bringing over as soon as you dump me on the train. I don't know what you're talking about, Judge. Evidence is my life, kid. Number one, you sent all your clothes out to the cleaners. I didn't have to stick your head in a hamper. Number two, you spent eight bucks for night raider cologne. You never spent eight bucks for anything in your life. And number three, you've been walking around here all week with a big smile on your face. I'm a happy guy. Don't spread too much good cheer while I'm gone. You know, I hate right. to be the one to bring this up, but uh, don't you think you're a little overdressed when you're taking a train to Chicago? <laughs> this is not a train, McCormick. It's the Casper Arrow. And I've been personally selected to join a distinguished group of lawyers and magistrates for the 50th anniversary. How come every time your name's mentioned here, it's 
in a different type style. You sure this wasn't addressed to occupant? Read the list, McCormick. Lonsdale, McCarthy, Blake, Reminger. Stymie, Alfalfa, Buckwheat. Hey, maybe you guys are going to build a clubhouse or something neat like that, huh? This happens to be the cream of the crop of contemporary law. Judge, if you guys want to go speeding through the night showing your briefs to each other, far be it for me to stand in your way. You know what your problem is? I live with Batman. You have no sense of romance, no sense of history. This is a classic train, McCormick, with an even classier guest list. Your attention, please. Now arriving on track 16, the Casper Arrow, ready for boarding. Here we are. Mm. Oh, sorry. Sorry, pal. Didn't hear you. Uh, I think I get the wrong compartment. Is this the Casper Arrow? Sure thing. What team you huddle for? Joe Murphy, Downing State coach, 13 and 3. Mel Hardcastle. See you brought the second string along, huh? <laughs> Mark McCormick, ex con, 2 to 5. <laughs> Sorry about you. <laughs> hey, you're not Bum Phillips, are you? Uh, no. Oh, he's a great coach. All aboard the Casper Arrow. Last call, please. Track Sorry. <laughs> Is it this Friday? Saturday? Five minutes, please. The train will leave in five minutes. Excuse me. Uh, could you tell me what compartment Chief Justice Reminger's in? I'm sorry, sir. There's no one checked in by that name. Really? Gee, you must have canceled. Well, very busy, man. Yeah, I'm five sure you have more important please. things to do, like nap. <sighs> yeah. Well. well Okay, I guess this is gonna be it. Yeah, so, you all right? Uh, yeah, need anything? Nope. Well, a hundred bucks, but... <laughs> Top drawer of my desk is an envelope with your name. Oh, just... Take care of the house. Right. No parties. Right, no. Have a nice time. Yeah, yeah. Get this. We had 13 seconds left to play. Nice. It was fourth down in inches. Now, obviously, we got to go for it. Why do I have this uncanny sensation that you came out of this the winner? Maybe so, lady, but it was a gut play. It took guts and courage. Testosterone. Hi. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It was fourth and in inches. Joe's team just took a timeout. Think of yourself as a beer commercial. Think of yourself as having our gratitude, Elizabeth Foster. Huh. I, you know, lady, uh, I don't mean to be impolite, but if you don't like sports, what are you doing on the Gridiron Gala? I don't know what you're talking about. Smart singles, unattached men and women, all professional, all accomplished. Well, maybe if you'd have listened to the end of the story, you'd have heard what we accomplished. New faces, Mixer. Actors, agents, producers? 
<laughs> Real estate. I take it you're not here for the gridiron gala either. Judicial form. Hey, where's the party? Ooh, hi there. You come here often? <laughs> My name is Bud. That it is. I'm going to find the steward. Hmm. Uh, perhaps, Judge, if you're dining alone tonight? Oh, sure. Oh, 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 oh. Better watch it, buddy. I think old dollface has got it on for you. <laughs> Her name is Elizabeth, and she's not a dollface. She's a math teacher. Oh. I better watch it, huh? I mean, she's liable to keep me after train. <laughs> so, uh, what's your name, sweet cakes? Ellen, double L. Uh, anyone want to tell me what's going on here? This is supposed to be all American, all sports. We got math teachers, actresses, real estate guys, and if you're not Bum Phillips, what the hell is going on? back then, didn't they? Well, we would like to know what's going on. We've been brought here under false pretenses. I'm afraid I don't understand. False pretenses? Take a look around, Smiley. Where are the girls? You're welcome to see my passenger list. Yours are the only names that were on it. Well... Looks like you're the action on this junket, sweetheart. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me tell you something, pal. Someone at the railroad better get his signal straight. You know, I got attorneys to handle these kind of things. There is no railroad. This is a private train. What are you talking about? The Casper Arrow went on the line 50 years ago. And it went off the line 19 years ago. Someone made special arrangements for this trip. Yeah, who? I'm afraid I have no idea. Dinner is in an hour and a half. I don't like it, Judge. Someone's drawing us offside, no one's tossing the flag. Yeah, I, I vote for jumping. Now, let's not pull the cord too early. There's got to be an explanation for this. I'm sure there is. I don't know that I want to hear it, though. Well, it's probably some kind of advertising hype. You know, they give you a color TV and you listen to some sales talk and buy lots or something. But... Yeah, at least the meals are free. Oh, yeah, I get a lot of that stuff. I never go, though. There's not a heck of a lot you can do with buying their luggage, you know what I mean? I'll tell you what. First station we come to, I'll get off and make a few phone calls. Nothing to worry about till then. <clears throat> Judge? Hi. Sure beats flying, huh? Judge, how many times do I have to tell you it was an accident? The Hindenburg was an accident. The Titanic was an accident. You got locked in a can. Will you listen to me right now as we speak? A tall brunette with a soft spot for curly-haired guys is driving up to the gatehouse. She's got blue eyes, she's got great legs, and she thinks journey is the last word in modern music. Do you get the picture, huh? But let's forget about that kind of an opportunity, huh? Because I would much rather spend four days on a train with you. Because it's so neat. Then you leave that little love note for me on the mirror. Love note? Look, Judge, I like you. But... OK, forget it. Put that on, and we'll go to dinner. And that's it. I get locked in the bathroom, you're just going to let it drop. You're going to talk, you're going to eat. What are you trying here? Oh, I get it. <clears throat> You're going to play Mr. Nice Guy, so I'll fall all over myself apologizing to you, huh? Well, <clears throat> you can forget that, Judge. I'll tell you what, why don't you just lay a few more hard castleisms on me and we'll call it a draw, huh? All right, how's this? I'm glad you're here because something's going on in this train.
Vietnam, huh? I used to catch a lot of that on TV. No, Sundays, right after the game. I still think we should have won. Used our defensive line all wrong. It must be so thrilling, sitting high in the courtroom, a Solomon imposing in your black robe, weighing evidence. Doing crossword puzzles. Yeah, it uh, it gets a little dull. So oh, now how can you say that? He's just being modest. You should see him up there, his hands firmly clutching that gavel, his cool, icy gaze cast downward to the courtroom. Something for dessert? Ooh. My lips would say yes, but my eyes would never forgive me. Uh, no, thank you. Well, I wouldn't want you to have to throw them out. Um, I'll take one of these. Uh, one of these. And this... So, the uh, judge tells me you're an actress. Well, aspiring. Uh, waitress, huh? <laughs> but very believable. Mm -hmm. mm. Last chance. No? Lethal. Guy like a loaf of bread. A fumble before you get two yards. The guy's dead. We don't need you doing color, okay, Joe? Whatever you say, pal. I'm just trying to be helpful. Is there a radio on this train? Yes, sir. It's in the end. Will you call the engineer and tell him to radio ahead to the cops and have him meet the train as soon as possible? But, sir, but just you do, do it, will you? Yeah, I'll explain later. And hey, what is this with what? the cops, Judge? Don't you think this guy would be better off with a mortician? He's right, Judge. You can't be sure it was cyanide. Cyanide? I know cyanide when I smell it, McCormick. Did you see that eclair he was having for dessert? It smells like an almond factory. Well, cyanide isn't the only thing that smells like almonds. It could have been almonds. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you guys talking about? Are you saying that someone popped this guy with a poison eclair? I thought his ticker stopped. Forget it, Joe. You're dealing with calamity milk here. We don't mess around with headaches, indigestion, sprained ankles. You travel with hard cast, so you get poison pastries. So what you are saying to me is that there is a killer on this train? That's what I'm saying. Well, well we've got to do something about this. I mean... Boy, I was looking forward to those eggs Benedict tomorrow morning. We are doing something about it. We're radioing ahead to the cops to meet the train. I don't believe this. This is a train. I mean, when you fly, you get nervous. Shaking around up there 40,000 feet in the air and trying to pretend that everything's the same as usual. But nervous on a train? That's why you gotta read the brochures. What, are you through now, both of you? We gotta go back there and fill in the others. Come on. I thought we were gonna let the cops handle this. The cops will handle it when they get here. Until then, we're involved, aren't we? Involved? Yeah. Involved? Wait a minute, you guys. Remember, I just got here. This was supposed to be a football junket. Yeah, and a judicial forum and a singles trip. But what you're saying to me is that this was planned and it is not over. Yeah. I think that's what he's telling us. I hate this. Listen, Judge, even if you're right, I don't think laying your killer on loose theory on these people is a good idea. They're going to go crazy. They're not going to go They're... crazy, McCormick. No, we're going to go in there and talk to them, and we'll handle it like adults. It's him. I know it. He's the murderer. He's the only one on the train without an invitation. And, and we might not even know he was on board if I hadn't found him hiding in the lavatory. Let's lock him in his compartment. When do we get to the adult part? Slow down, Elizabeth. I can vouch for him. Uh, no offense, Judge, but who's going to vouch for you? If you'd ask me, I'd keep my eye on the steward. Talk about a case of the creeps. To be honest with you, I'm uh, sort of sorry that Bud quit so early. He was definitely my first guest. I've spoken with the engineer. Someone has tampered with the radio. It's completely dysfunctional. I just love the way you brighten up a party. What about the next station? There are no stations until we reach Claremont. How far is that? We'll pass through at midday tomorrow. Well, I don't know about you folks, but uh, this does not rank as one of the best times I've ever had. I'll take my chances walking. Where are you going to walk to? We're in the middle of the mountains. 
I'll be in my compartment if you need me. Well, it looks like it's gonna be a long night, and I think we ought to double up. The thing about doubling up is that it means one of us is going to be sleeping with a murderer. There's gotta be a way to get some help. I'm gonna go up and talk to the engineer. I haven't got any better ideas, not until we get to Claremont anymore. If we get to Claremont. Hey, McCormick, you want a signal or something? Sorry. Where are you going? Sleep well? Huh? Yeah, no. Where are you going? I'm going down the end of the hall, if that's all right. What's all this? Well, I'm trying to come up with something. There's got to be a reason we're all on the same train. There's got to be a connection if I can find it. Yeah, you're all suckers for junk mail. Yeah, it's better than anything I came up with. <laughs> What are you doing? Go on with you. Judge, I think I can make it down to the bathroom and back without a chaperone. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Oh. oh. Never gonna live this down. Should've let him come with me. I didn't need this. I had plans. Right now I could have been waking up to a home cooked breakfast. No, that'd be too easy, wouldn't it, Judge? Judge. That's what I get for stealing cars. Most guys get prison, I get hard castle. And this isn't even that bad. Most of the time I get shot at. I can tell you. Can I live a normal life like normal people, you know? Watch TV, have a barbecue or two, hang out on Lumber World on Sundays. I gotta find that train! Give me a sign! McCormick! Find him? Sorry, Judge. Maybe he didn't look every place. Easy, Judge. We looked everywhere he could be. Old Bud is still back there alone. Well, he's got to be someplace. Look, maybe it's better off this way. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe he bailed out. Well, we got to stop this train. <laughs> To be honest with you, my hopes aren't rising. Uh, what kind of a station is this? I gotta set a line else look better than this. It's old mine town. Back in the 30s, they had a gold rush up this way, and once the mine shut down, the town shut down. Why is this station still on the main line? It's not. We're about 200 miles off the main line. This is a private train. We couldn't get clear to the main line until down past Lincoln. That's about another 700 miles. Is there any chance of getting that radio working? About as much chance you got of getting that dead fella back there up and around. I still say we try it on foot. There's got to be somebody living around here. Or not. Come on, Bill. I think I need a cup of your terrible coffee. The fastest way to get help is going to be for us to climb back on that train, hold her wide open till we get to Lincoln. I knew I should have passed on the train and taken that free condo in Palm Springs. 
I never would have bought it when I know that. <laughs> you still worried about McCormick? It's a habit. Hey! What are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Let's go. Everybody out. Hey, you in the back. Let's go. Out. Hey, come on, out. Come on. McCormick, stay police. You know what kind of violations I'm looking at here? Huh? Look at this. No fenders, no taillights. The back end's dragging two inches off the ground. What is this? What is this? Macho? Look at this. Now this is sexy. What is wrong with you guys? Can't impress a girl unless your front fork is six inches over regulation? Is that it? Yeah, sure. Well, from the looks of things, it doesn't look like you guys have very much respect for the law around here. Oh, come on, come on! Come on, give me an excuse. Please. Take one of you jokers out, my lieutenant will give me a medal. One of you guys buys it, they don't even bother investigating it. Come on. They're just gonna put another gold star on my chart, three more, and I get to go to Disneyland. Oh, look at this. Look. Oh, now this is cute. Ooh, a chicky stick. This is nice. Who picked out the vinyl? I think you guys missed your calling. You could have had a lucrative career as an interior decorator. Hey, I didn't see your badge, man. Oh, what? You couldn't read it if I let you hold it. Then why don't you hold it out and you can watch my lips Sure. Move. Oops. Well. Ah, hey! Oh, hey. Oh, well, don't right. just watch him! Joseph Allen. So, so, are you sure you give me everything? Judge, I told you what we had to eat at my fifth birthday party. Even I get bored hearing that much about myself. Girl. You really think there's a point to all this? A good friend of mine is missing off the train. The rest of you can sit around and stare at each other if you want to, but I want to get a handle on this, all right? Sharples, North Hollywood, June 25th, 51. Did you grow up there? Born in Alhambra. Grew up in and around the San Fernando Valley. Obviously, this is going to be as interesting as mine. Well, <clears throat> let's get specific. What now, Milt? It seems we all are who we say we are. I think we ought to search the compartments. What do you expect to find in mine, Judge? All I've got is sweat socks and athletic supporters. Who's gonna do the searching? All of us. We'll swap compartments. Look, I'm all for this, Judge. I'm just not sure it's gonna do a lot of good in helping your friend. Man, am I glad to see you. I haven't seen another human being in over 60 miles. I mean, where do you guys go on a Saturday night around here anyway? The corner wheat field? Uh, step away from the car, please. The car? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Uh, listen, you've got to get on the radio. Listen to me, there's a bunch of people on a train. One of them has been murdered. We've got to get to them. You've got to get on the radio. All right, can I see some identification? Will you listen to me? We don't have time for this. You've got to get on the radio. I'm telling you about a homicide. Have a driver's license, sir. You're going to feel really stupid when you find out you blew this. Yeah, yeah, I've got a driver's license. It's, uh... Um... Uh, must have fallen... Oh, uh, look, I know how this looks. All right, get up against the car. Now, wait a second. This is silly. This is really... Take it easy here, will you? Take it... I, I want your badge number. You're violating my rights here. 465. 465. Right. Okay. You still violate my rights. Chicky stick. <clears throat> Low seat. No fenders. You want more? I've got a terrific explanation. Hey, Judge, what are we looking for? I don't know, but when you find it, let me know.
looking for skeletons. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, so maybe it wasn't very funny. You don't like me very much, do you? Like you? Hey, Bill, William, come on. I, I think you're terrific. Can I, um, can I go now? I'm not unaware of your comments. <sighs> See, that's just it. I mean, what kind of a person says, I'm not unaware of... You do make people a bit uncomfortable. Have you ever thought that maybe people make me uncomfortable? Don't think I haven't tried. Well, stop trying. Just, I know, try, um, try smiling. Uh, and maybe we ought to start with something simpler. I know, um, what happened? Moorbridge Tunnel. What's going on? We're in the tunnel. Everybody all right? Bassett sets up. He takes a snap and rolls right. He's hey, got listen lucky. Listen. It's a great in. point. Listen. That was a great game. That year we were 15 and 1. Well, I struck out. Anyone else have any luck? Where's Elizabeth? Charles, Zebra 6-3, over. Got it. Thanks. 16-3 Baker, over. All right, I'm an ex-con. Note the accent on the word X. All right. You have the right to remain silent. Oh, man. Did you ever have a really bad day? Anything you say can be I know the you. drill. I know it. Just take me in. Right, Everybody go. back at headquarters got a personality? Oh, no, oh, no, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. I, I, if I'm going to be accused of stealing that bike, I don't want it sitting in the middle of the road. I'm not going to pay for it if it gets flattened. Come on. Doing this for you, Judge. Him. I know it's him. Before you tell me how wonderful it is to see me, I may need you to pull a couple of strings for me, okay? Judge, it's just a coincidence. Coincidence is what we're looking for, okay? How's this? Between the summer of 69 and the fall of 71, everybody on this train was living or working that ice. Well, I guess this trip's a leg up then. That's all I got to work with. And you think 
By leaving these poison pen notes in Carl and Joe's compartments, that's going to draw the guy out. You got any better ideas? Yeah, put your slippers on. What for? I want you to walk me to the bathroom. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Up and at him. Move it. Yeah, what's going on? We decided that we're all going to sit together until the afternoon when we get into Lincoln. Oh, yeah? Who decided that? Me and Carl. You want to wake up the judge? Hey, judge, come on. Let's go, Reveille. Judge, come on. Come on, wake up. You guys just go back to your compartment and leave me alone, huh? Cut it out. I know how you feel, okay? You think you're the first guy that ever lost a friend? You were a team. And, well, things happened. Hardcastle was just traded to a better league, that's all. And you have got to learn to accept that. What are you talking about? This isn't football, Joe. Somebody did this, they're going to do it again. What do you want me to do, sit around and wait till I get traded? All right. Maybe you're right. But tearing this place apart is not going to help anyone. Will you listen to me? Hardcastle said that he had this thing figured out. Now, he wrote it down somewhere on a piece of paper. I've just got to find the paper, that's all. Didn't he tell you what he came up with? No, that wasn't his style. Hardcastle had to figure it out for himself first. I just got to find the paper. He didn't bury it under the floorboards. And there's nothing left of this place. Maybe, maybe he threw it out. Joe, we're on a train. Where's out? All right, do what you want. But remember, Nobody leaves their compartment till we get to Lincoln. I, uh, I think the kid took a couple of steps over the line, you know what I mean? Can you blame him? See you in Lincoln. I got in bed. You came very close. Judge, what is going on? I, I thought you were... Come on, quit fooling around. McCormick told you I had a piece of paper with a name on it. You came back here figuring you could get it. <laughs> what are you saying? I mean, you, you think I'm doing this? I'm killing these people? What happened in Van Nuys? I don't know what you're talking about, all right? Okay, I wanted to find your notes. Why the hell not? When McCormick mentioned him, I figured it was the best opportunity to find the killer before he found me. Are you going to hang me for that? Let me see your wallet. You're playing games with me, Judge. Let me see your wallet. You made a big point of taking your license out of it yesterday. Who in hell put you in charge anyway? We did. Give me your wallet, pal.
Always didn't last that long, did it, Ellen? I think I hate you the most. I want you to be last. So, how's it feel to take a look at a man you all tried to destroy? You're not Charlie. Oh, what's the matter, sweetheart? Can't you see the scars you left? Maybe you two people want to uh, discuss this frankly and... Uh... No, coach. I know you two. And you, Judge. Charlie Carlson? Charlie Carlson. Charlie... Charlie... Hey, didn't you... Uh... No, coach, I never did. Never. Remember, you said I wasn't good enough to make the team. That's what you all thought. I wasn't quite good enough for any of you. Carlson. Armed robbery. 5 to 8, 1975, 76. I drove the car, Judge. That's all. I drove the car. I didn't have the gun. I didn't pull the trigger. I drove. But you couldn't hear that, could you? You've, you've changed your face. Well, you see, now, that's the thing about trying to change. You try. But sometimes you just can't cut deep enough. You know, I never got a chance to ask the math teacher or the army lieutenant if they knew what hit him. Maybe it's better that you know. Come here, coach. You're not going to get out of this. No, correction, judge. You're not going to get out of this. See, this train is going to have a little accident. And by the time they unpile the wreck, nobody, nobody's going to be wondering how you died. <laughs> Come on over here, coach. Charlie. You know, making the team, make, making the grades, those were the rules. Yeah, I know. Well, we're playing by different rules now, Coach. Come here. Take them up front there, please. You know, guys, when you think about it, really, who wants to go to Chicago anyway? Right. Take it easy, Joe. Yeah, why change now? Yeah. You guys? I'll yeah. see you, Joe. 25 friends to Chicago. Yeah. My resume. <laughs> hey, Willie, wait a minute. You promised me a cold beer and the best corned beef in Lincoln. Real life. See, that's what I like about the movie. She would have ended up with me. 
Well, we're probably going to have to wait till tomorrow to get a train home. No, huh? no. You and I are going to go down. We're going to get two tickets for a 747 and wing our way back to Los Angeles. Oh, no way. Forget Listen. it, Judge. There's no way I'm getting back on that train. No, now, come on. Uh, <clears throat> let's walk this way. That's him. Let's go. Have a nice flight, Judge. I'll see you in three days, okay?